Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode on the Financial Madness. My name is Kozan and I'm here to help you be better with your money. Do you find yourself or do you know anyone that is really bad at saving money consistently? Well, in this episode, I'm gonna give you three quick and easy tips on how to save money far more effectively. It's helped me and hopefully it's gonna help you too. So let's get on with the show. So the first tip I'm gonna give you is to save for a goal. Do not save just for the sake of saving. I've said this in previous videos, but saving is far more effective if you have an idea of what the end goal looks like. Saving goals can be something big like buying a house or a car and even saving up for your emergency fund. Always have an emergency fund. Or it can be something quite small like saving money for a holiday or for entertainment like going out, going to restaurants, etc, etc. You get the gist. So you can have one saving goal in mind, but if you're like me, you're going to have multiple because I wanna make the most out of my life. So to do this, you split your money into these buckets and each bucket represents a different saving goal. Later on in this video, I'm actually gonna show you what my saving buckets look like at this point in time so you can get an idea um, of how I'm doing it. Basically, at the end of each month, when I get my salary, a proportion of my income will go into each of these saving buckets. What you'll find is that you'll be saving far more effectively because you have an idea of what the end goal is rather than just saving for the hell of it. So for the majority of these buckets, they probably will be held in some sort of savings account. And if you can, it'll be really good if you can have these savings accounts outside of your main account, and even better, have multiple savings accounts. And I'll explain why a little bit later on. But I get it, it might seem a lot of hassle to open up different savings accounts for different goals. Some goals may not even warrant their own savings account anyway. To help get around this, there's this great service offered when you are a Starling bank account member. Now Starling is one of those new online bank accounts very similar to Revolut and Monzo and all the others that have recently blown up onto the banking market in recent years. But the one thing that I've discovered that Starling has is that they have something called Spaces. And Spaces is basically an opportunity for you to create buckets within your bank account and you can deposit money into those bank accounts whenever you like. And you can name these spaces. I have one for my holiday fund. I have one for me saving to renovate my house. And I've even, do I dare say it, have one for my wedding fund. So the next tip I'm gonna give you is to make sure that you are paying yourself first. So for the majority of us, we typically earn our money through a monthly salary from our workplace. Now to understand the concept of pay yourself first, we have to understand the journey from when we get paid to when it actually lands in our pocket. So let's think about this. So it's come to the end of the month and it's payday. So the company pay your wage. But before it comes into your pocket, it goes through a variations of steps. The first step is that if you've enrolled in a workplace pension, money will automatically be taken out of your payslip into that pension, which is a good thing. This is one step of paying yourself first. But then after that, the government step in and they take their share for national insurance, income tax, and if you've got an outstanding student loan, they'll be taking a share for student loan as well. And then what's left over is what you get paid. Now we have to think about what is likely to happen next. You're gonna pay your rent, so your landlord gets a share of your money. You're gonna pay your utility bills, so those energy providing companies will get some of your money. You're gonna go to restaurants or entertainment, so those businesses will get your money. And then at the end of that month, whatever's left, if there is anything left, is what we put in our savings account. But why do we pay ourselves last? So what you should be doing is understanding how much money you are spending each month. And you should be calculating how much money you have left over once you've paid off all these costs. I have a simple budgeting sheet which I'll put in the description down below and this will help you calculate how much money you have left over at the end of each month. I also did a video on this earlier on in my channel and I'll put that in the description as well. So once you've calculated how much money you have left over and hopefully you have money left over, otherwise this should raise huge warning flags for you, This means that you're spending above or very close to your income. So once you've calculated this money, you can then decide how much proportion of that money goes into each of your saving buckets. So once you've done that, you should be comfortable with paying yourself first. And this means changing the journey to look something a little bit like this. So again, it's payday and the company have paid your wage. Again, the first step is that if you have enrolled in a workplace pension, it will automatically go straight into there first. 
whatever's left over. The government will take their share of taxes. But now, once the money has landed into your pocket, you're immediately going to put a proportion of that money straight into your saving buckets. And then from what's left over after that is what goes towards your rent, your utility bills, and all the other costs that we factored in when we did our budgeting sheet. By the way, when I say buckets, it doesn't necessarily have to be saved in a savings account. It can actually be in the form of investments. For saving goals where you require access to the money in the fairly short term or immediate term, it's probably best to keep them in the savings account. But for goals that are more long term, like saving towards your financial freedom or buying a house, which may take several years for you to get to, it's probably worth putting that money into an investment account. That's because over the short term, the stock market is quite volatile. It kind of pretty much goes up and down. But over the long term, you stand a good chance of riding out those small bumps and ensuring that you have a good higher return in the future. So now I'm gonna show you what I do once I get my pay slip through. I'm gonna show you what buckets I use and show you what percentage of my income goes into those buckets as well. So once I get paid, 31% of my income every month goes to the government. Now once the government have taken their share, the rest of my money immediately goes to the following buckets. 7% of my income goes into uh, something that I called a financial freedom bucket, which is where I'm saving for a passive income in the future where hopefully I can retire early. This is actually held in an investment fund because it's over the long term. And 24% of my income goes to a bucket that I've called buying a house. Now, if you've been following my channel, you would have known that I've recently purchased my first property and we're currently going through the paperwork. Now, the next 5% is for my emergency fund. I like to hold three to six months of my salary with in an emergency fund. 1% uh, of my savings goes to something called my holiday fund. This is literally £30 a month I put in a holiday fund. The last one is actually one of our most recent buckets that me and my partner have been discussing. It's something called the wedding fund. Now, before you get too excited, I'm not actually getting married anytime soon, no engagement, no ring. But you know, we discussed that we're likely to be getting married in the future and it's obviously gonna be a very expensive ordeal. So, you know, why not chuck in 30 pounds every month into a savings account, just so we have a little bit of pot to work with when it comes to, you know, the special day. So now that I've paid myself first, and currently I'm actually paying 38% of my monthly salary into my saving buckets, I have 31% of my salary left over. And this 31% should cover, because I've already calculated, remember, in my budgeting sheet, should cover my costs such as rent, utility bills, food, going out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now the third and final point is that you need to now automate your money. So once you've decided how much money is going into each of these saving buckets, you need to set up a direct debit or standing order from your bank account on the same day. Now this is important, it has to be the same day that you get paid. So when it comes to payday, you've got it already set up that once that money comes in, your money automatically goes into the saving buckets that you've set up either within the same bank or with other saving account banks as well. Now not only does this save you a bunch of time by not having to worry or remember when to put your money into your savings accounts or remembering how much money goes into which bucket because you've already done that in your direct debit setup, but there are some psychological benefits too. Removing yourself from actively moving your money from one account to another removes your emotions from that process. And emotions are probably one of the biggest factors when it comes to our attitude towards money. If you recall, I mentioned that it would be really beneficial if you have a savings account that is outside of your current account. Or even better, have a different savings account for each saving bucket. Because having that money taken away from your current account immediately into these saving buckets means that you're less likely to see that money, which means that you're less likely to go into those savings account and take money out of that savings account for any other reason other than the saving goal that it was intended for. Now what you'll find is that your current account should be equivalent to the amount of money you have left over after you've paid yourself first. And now what I found is whenever I make a random purchase on my current account card, I don't have that guilt of, oh, I shouldn't be making this purchase because I should really be putting more money into my savings account. Because I've already did that bit at the beginning of the month when I got paid. So any money that I put into my current account, I can use as I wish. Obviously after paying your rent and, and bills, etc. Yeah, so those are the three tips that I wanted to share with you for you to become a better saver. Uh, so tip number one was to save for a purpose. So divvy up your saving goals into smaller buckets and have an end goal in mind uh, for each of those buckets. Number two is to pay yourself first. So understand how much money you are spending each month and then figuring out how much money you have left over to put in those savings buckets. And then number three is to automate 
those savings. So set up a direct debit or a standing order from the moment you get paid into your saving buckets that you have now set up. So those are the things that I do to become a more efficient saver. If you have any more suggestions, I would love to hear them. Please put them in the comment section down below. Let me know what other kind of buckets you guys have as well. I'm always looking for some new ideas. If you like the video and you found it really helpful, please give this a thumbs up. That does wonders for the growth of my channel and I release a video every single Monday. So if you wanna keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later.